Hey, happy, 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 beautiful, amazing day. Dr. Bob Rakowski here out of Houston, Texas with May 15, 2020 SARS COVID update. Uh, saw an interesting post that a friend of mine put on today about uh, all the pandemics since 2000. So we'll give you a little reminder, uh, uh, starting with Y2K, of what we've been told was going to be very destructive to our life and to our world. So 2000 was Y2K, 2001 was anthrax, 2002 West Nile virus, 2003 was SARS-1, 2005 bird flu, 2006 E. coli, 2008 was the financial crisis and collapse, 2009 swine flu, 2012, remember the Mayan calendar said that that was the absolute end of the world, 2013 North Korea was gonna cause World War III, 2014, Ebola, 2015, terrorism and ISIS, 2016, Zika virus, and then 2020. Now we've got the coronavirus. And one of the questions I have to ask is, in your lifetime, unless you are you know, at, at least 102 years old, you have not experienced the pandemic according to the, the history of the U.S. and the world. So I drew these lines to, to kind of make a point, but this is the death rate from infectious disease, and it was 1900 to 1996. So understand that 80% of people died from infectious disease uh, at the turn of the century. Now, was it antibiotics that saved people? Was it vaccines that saved people? No, no, no. Antibiotics, there was a 75% reduction in death rate from infectious disease before antibiotics a 91.25% reduction in death rate from infectious disease before vaccines and none since. So if that hasn't taken the death rate down at all, what has? Well, the public health experts will tell you it's basically improved sanitation and hygiene. But let's, let's keep looking. This is the world. And notice from 1950 to 2000, and I'll go back to this to make a point, a pandemic has a spike up a major medical advance would create a spike down. Notice there was a very consistent decline in death rate. No advances that uh, drove it and only one pandemic. So notice here from 1950 to current, no spikes, no pandemics on the entire globe, nor no earth shattering, major life preserving medical advance. Notice also that the death rate is predicted to go up. And what, what is the death rate going up from now? Chronic disease. We have so many sick people. Well, if we've got all this great medicine and all these great antibiotics uh, and all these vaccines, why are so many people so sick? I think it's time to take a critical look at that. So the economists say that we can figure out how bad this pandemic is by looking at how it affects the total deaths on the planet. So this is worldometer.info. This is the population snapshot as of this morning. These are the deaths this year. The death rate at the end of 2019 was 759 per 10,000. Notice we are under the death rate from 2019, even though there was supposed to be a little bump this year. Now let's look at the US, because uh, we have so many corona deaths, and, and especially New York. New York is the hotbed of corona and corona death. We have to wonder what's wrong with New York. Um, you know, I love New York. I love my friends in New York, but I hope they're taking a critical look at really what's going on. Is the data being faked? Uh, are they poisoning the air where people are more vulnerable? Uh, is their healthcare so poor, uh, you know, that they, they have 70x the average death rate? Um, hopefully those questions will be answered and rectified. But when you take a look at the death rate in the US, 8.880 per 1,000. Here's a snapshot of our population today, the number of deaths. We are 76,000 deaths below where we were projected to be at this case. So is corona killing extra people or just killing people that were on their way out? Now, some people got real upset with me for saying that. The average age of death in Boston was 81 years old, in Italy, 79 years old. Um, and these people had multiple medical problems. This just seemed to be the straw that broke the camel's back. So why do we blame that straw and shut down the whole world? 
Now, I also want to be very mindful that if you lost a loved one, I personally don't know anyone uh, that's lost a loved one to, to this, not one person. Uh, and I know a lot of people, but if you lost one, I'm very, very sorry for you. There was either something very unique about that case or something else. It's not a statistic, it's a life and all life is precious, but so are the lives of people that are essentially being put on house arrest. So I want you to look up this YouTube video. So it's very easy to screenshot this and just search it or search the title on YouTube. Ordinary men and women are too small minded to govern their own affairs. So this was when President uh, Obama was in office and it was a, a global address. Now, to be fair, I fact checked it and Facebook said, well, this was way out of context. Uh, that's not what he meant but just watch it and tell me your thoughts. Here's the quote, ordinary men and women are too small minded to govern their own affairs. And therefore they need some big sovereign world order to govern them, to control everything that they do, to microchip them. He didn't say those words, but you know, we just take that in context of today because that thought process is being uh, shared. You're not smart enough to figure out if it's safe to leave your home. You're not smart enough to choose if you want to wear a mask that's proven to do nothing. You're not smart enough to, to determine if social distancing, which is proven in multiple studies to not work. And by the way, do you see Fauci wearing a mask in any of his public things? Maybe you will now, maybe he's getting flack, but if we, if the, if we really need it, wouldn't he be wearing one? Pretty fascinating. So we'll finish on a positive. Yesterday is not ours to recover. By the way, I hope you had a beautiful yesterday creating memories and strength for today. But tomorrow is ours to win or lose. And by the way, so is the moment. The moment is here now to win or lose. So how do you win? Well, get better, stronger, faster, smarter. Realize that we are still the land of the free and the home of the brave. We just need to exercise both of those qualities. I'm Dr. Bob Rakowski, absolutely knowing that we can all be happy, healthy, and successful.